shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. A stranger is an individual who have forsaken the idols of their father's house and placed their trust in the Elohim of Israel. The strangers choose to forsake their culture, heritage, and everything about their people to serve the Elohim of Israel among the Israelites. The strangers believe the Most High Yah is the supreme ruler of all. The strangers are supposed to be humble servants to the Most High. The strangers that will cleave to the Israelites are a small minority. Israelites, there is a difference between the strangers and the wicked. Too many Israelites are mistaking the wicked for the strangers and the genuine strangers for the wicked. The Most High said you would know a person by their behavior. In addition, the scriptures reveal to us that we should test their spirit to see if they are of the Most High. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. One of the biggest mistakes our people make is not testing the spirits of non-Israelites to see if they are of the Most High. Anybody that embrace our culture and us, we are quick to accept them as brothers and sisters. Israelites, that should not be. History have proven to us that the serpent seed cannot be trusted. We all have witnessed how the serpent seed would befriend the indigenous people all over the world. Once they gain the trust of the indigenous people, they attack, assume their identity, and steal their land. In today's society, the descendants of the serpent seed are continuing in their ancestors' footsteps. They will pretend to love you and embrace your culture. Once you welcome them and make them a part of the family, the serpent seed steal your ideas and culture for themselves and proclaim they are the creator of it all. The apple never fall too far from the tree. The scriptures reveal to us that the devil's mission in life is to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. If we take the time to examine non-Israelites, just as the scriptures encourage us to test a person's spirit, we would avoid many setbacks and oppression. Their behavior would reveal their true intentions towards you. History have proven to us that the serpent seed is not interested in living in peace with the indigenous population. If they truly want change and to live in peace with everyone, segregation and discrimination would not exist. One of the many problems indigenous people endure is that they want to be accepted by their enemies, that they will forsake their Elohim and embrace the wicked ways of the serpent seed to be accepted in the satanic system. The Most High said to his people, because he has chosen us and set us apart, the world would never accept us nor love us. The world is an enemy to the Most High and reject the Most High as well. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. In the awakening, we have Israelites welcoming non-Israelites into their assemblies and giving them position of authority over other Israelites. They do not examine the person to see if they are of the Most High. The non-Israelites are simply saying they love the Elohim of Israel and love black culture and we welcome them openly. The non-Israelites posing as strangers bring demonic spirits into these assemblies and influence the congregation with doctrines of devils. They take over your life and cause many Israelites to drift from the Most High with their demonic doctrines. Israelites, if you have an ear to hear, let them hear. It's all about how you view the world you live in. Discernment is key if you want to bring unity and peace into your household and communities.
If you can discern a person's character, you will save yourself and people from the kingdom of darkness. Israelites are taking their precious inheritance and handing it over to the wicked. Not only are Israelites giving their inheritance to the strangers and heathens, the scriptures reveal to us that the riches of the righteous are in the hands of the wicked. How did the non-Israelites get so rich? A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Every day I witness Israelites handing over their blessings to the non-Israelites. When Israelites sell their talents and gifts to the heathen, that is giving away your blessings. When you fail to get to know the people you welcome into your life, you are handing over your blessings. The Most High said a stranger should not have any authority over an Israelite. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Many awaken Israelites greatly err when they bring a stranger into the congregation and give that stranger a leadership position. The Most High said your leaders must come from your own people, the Israelites. Many strangers believe they can lead the Israelites. The Most High is the Elohim of Israel. He knows the Israelites. A stranger would need to be taught by an Israelite the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. The laws was given to the Israelites. Just because the Israelites had disobeyed the Most High, it did not disqualify the Israelites from teaching the strangers the ways of the Most High. An Israelite with the Holy Spirit operating in them no more than a stranger in the flesh without the Holy Spirit. A non-Israelite trying to educate the world about the Elohim of Israel creates religion and the people who follow religion are under demonic oppression. The scriptures reveal to us that a stranger cannot enter the sanctuary who is operating in the flesh. Thus saith the Lord God, No stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Strangers, the Israelites are not the only people that can operate in the flesh. For some reason, many strangers seem to believe they are exempt. The kingdom of darkness do not discriminate. Satan will use whomever make themselves available to him. When you come against the natural branches, you are in the flesh. When you exalt yourself over the Israelite, you are in the flesh. When you believe you should control the awakening, you are in the flesh. When pride take over you, you are in the flesh. When you covet the Israelite's inheritance, you are in the flesh. I have seen diabolical comments made by so-called strangers operating in the flesh. These so-called strangers swear they will be saved because they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they are exempt from the judgment of the Most High. When you disobey the laws of the Most High, you place yourself under the wrath of the Most High. A true stranger who served the Elohim of Israel would not come into a bloodline and try to take it over, nor make outrageous demands. A real stranger is grateful that he or she is given an opportunity to know and serve the Elohim of Israel. The strangers the Most High loved and accepted to serve him and dwell among his people do not want to start a conflict with the natural branches, but to serve the Most High. The strangers have a common goal with the Israelites. That goal is to serve the Elohim of Israel in the spirit and in the truth. In addition to fight against the kingdom of darkness that is bringing division and pain among the real servants of the Most High. Israelites, it is important to examine and test the spirits of the strangers and Israelites to see if the Most High is leading them or the kingdom of darkness is leading them. When you have the ability to discern a person's spirit, you will make the proper decision with the help of the Holy Spirit on how to move forward. Israelites, when you make an agreement with a stranger, you are establishing a covenant. A covenant is binding and the Most High will honor all covenants. It is important not to establish binding covenants with people you do not know, especially if you have not tested their spirit. Today, Israelites are establishing all kinds of covenants with people who simply state they love the Elohim of Israel. When you do not properly examine the person, you put your family and yourself at risk to be cursed. On multiple occasions, the Most High warned our ancestors on establishing covenants with the heathens. The scriptures reveal to us about the Gibeonites' deception. The Gibeonites disguised themselves as homeless travelers in the hopes of establishing a covenant with the Israelites. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho, 
and to AI. They did work wilily, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks upon their asses, and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes, and clouted upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and mouldy. And they went to Joshua, unto the camp at Gilgal, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country, now therefore make ye a league with us. Joshua and the rest of the Israelites with him did not seek the Most High concerning the matter. Once the Gibeonites established a covenant with the Israelites, the Most High honored the covenant, and the Israelites could not break the covenants they made, or they risked being judged by the Most High. And the men took of their victuals, and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them, and made a league with them, to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swear unto them. There is nothing new under the sun. We have the wicked who care nothing about the Elohim of Israel coming into the awakening, pretending to be strangers, and the Israelites are accepting them and appointing them as leaders over themselves. The Israelites are establishing covenants with these people, and the Most High will honor those covenants. Do not cry out to the Most High when they turn on you. The same Gibeonites that mislead the Israelites were the same people that request to have seven of King Saul's descendants to make an atonement for the covenant made. The Most High honored the Gibeonites' request and delivered seven of Saul's descendants. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. Israelites, I have said to you on multiple occasions that trials have multiple purpose. Not only did the Most High honor the covenant made with the Gibeonites, the Most High used the same trials to honor the covenant David and Jonathan made among themselves. Jonathan asked David to look after his family. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. Do you see why it is important to test the spirits of the so-called strangers to see if they are truly of the Most High? Many Israelites want to see the wrath of the Most High upon the wicked, yet they continue to make covenants with these people to save them. Take your time to test their spirits. The strangers who are truly for the Most High are few in numbers. The scriptures state, narrow is the road that leads to life, and a few will find that road. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Today, we have many outsiders, non-Israelites, confessing they love and serve the Elohim of Israel. The scriptures reveal only a few would find a path to the Most High. The strangers the scriptures speak of are the minority. Israelites, the strangers who truly love the Most High do exist. Remember, the strangers are the people from other nations who serve the Elohim of Israel. I have seen a few Israelites comment that the strangers are Israelites. The strangers are not Israelites, but people from different nations that serve Yah. Moreover, concerning the stranger which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. The wicked are people from all nations, including Israelites who are against the Elohim of Israel. 
The wicked are those who have embraced the ways of the world. And these individuals are those whom the scriptures reveal that are on the broad road that leads to destruction. Israelites do not confuse the strangers with the wicked heathens and Israelites who dislike the Elohim of Israel. There are more of them than there are of those who serve the most high. The kingdom of darkness have deceived many heathens and Israelites through religion. None Israelites believe there are Gentiles grafted in. The kingdom of darkness deceived many into believing that if they accept Jesus, they would inherit the coming kingdom. Many gravitate to religion because all the work is done for them. In order for Satan to get the worship he seek, he used the spirit of fear to get many to bow down and worship him. Religion said, if you do not accept the Messiah that came in his own name, you would not be saved. Many people fear that if they do not do what religion say, they would not inherit the coming kingdom and they would end up in the lake of fire. Israelites and strangers who serve the Most High, the Most High did not give us the spirit of fear. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because the Most High did not give us the spirit of fear, we should not allow the spirit of fear to disable us. Anyone or any establishment using fear to recruit people are not for the Elohim of Israel, but for the kingdom of darkness. The scripture said to fear the Most High is the beginning of knowledge. Fearing the Most High and being fearful is two different types of fear. Fearing the Most High is revering the Creator. Fearing for your life is being afraid. Do not let the synagogue of Satan deceive you into accepting the Messiah that came in his own name through fear. The purpose of religion is to better control the people. The longer the kingdom of darkness keep the Israelites in idolatry and rebellion, the longer the kingdom of darkness rule. Israelites, the wicked will flock to your channels and platforms where we gather on one accord to come against the truth. They will try to discredit you. They will pretend to know more. They are only deceiving themselves. The wicked do not want you to establish a relationship with your Elohim. The kingdom of darkness who is operating in the children of disobedience will do everything they can to disrupt the truth. You have to look past what's in front of you and continue to seek the most high. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness and its human agents get you out of alignment with the most high. The serpent seed will pose to be the strangers to secure your trust. Once they achieve their agenda, they will interfere with the truth. The wicked are disguising themselves as the strangers. It is your responsibility to examine the so-called strangers to see if they bear good fruits. Take your time to examine them. You do not want to rush this process. The Most High will reveal their heart intent towards you and the awakening if you take your time to test their spirit. You do not want to skip this important step in discerning a person's character and motives. When you know how to discern a person's motives, you will be able to differentiate the strangers who sincerely serve the Elohim of Israel with the imposters. Israelites, do not let the demons in the flesh deceive you. Regardless of how nice they appear to be, test their spirit. Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. His ministers will do the same. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I want to remind the strangers that you are coming into an established family, a bloodline that was chosen by the Most High himself to bear his name. The Israelite bloodline is not a religion. If you want to be a part of the Israelite culture, you have to live by the standards and laws of the Creator, the Elohim of Israel. You cannot come into a family as an outsider to take it over or try to control it. The Most High has established his rules and the way he wants his creation to serve him. When you decided to serve the Elohim of Israel, you made a choice to live by his statutes, laws, and commandments. Do not try to change the Most High's mission by bringing the doctrines of your idols into the awakening. You cannot drink from the cup of the Elohim of Israel and drink in the cup of the idols of your father's house. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. If you choose to tag along in the family of the Israelite heritage, you have to respect the people the Most High chose, the Israelites, and the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, 
but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. 